Okay, welcome back everyone. In the last video, we talked about what charge was and we introduced the idea of electrostatics. Well, in this video, we're going to be looking at the concept of charging. So, in other words, how does charge move from one point to another? And in order to do this, we have to kind of get some vocab out of the way. And this is probably something you already know about. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about materials that we call conductors. So most conductors are metals because they have one or two valence electrons. And so what that means is that, for example, the alkaline earth metals or the alkali metals, their outer shell of electrons only has one or two. And as we know, those form positive ions, either plus one or plus two, sometimes plus three, okay? And in other words, they very readily lose their electrons, okay? So if I was going to represent a metal, I might have some sort of a lattice structure, okay? Where these atoms, these little dots represent nuclei, so there's some sort of regular structure to this. And the metals have many electrons, not just the one or two that are the valence electrons, but those are in orbits, if you will, that are kind of close to the nucleus. So the blue dot is the nucleus, and what I'm drawing are the orbits of most of the electrons. Okay, well, that still leaves me with my outer or valence electrons and you can see that these are a lot further out and that's basically what makes a metal a metal is that if I have an electron here it's very easy for it to kind of switch to the outer orbit of the next atom and to kind of you know play the game of I can go wherever I want okay as long as I kind of stay at you know the right radius and so this is kind of what happens get the idea. Okay? And that's what we would call a conductor. And it's almost like this electron is in a gas of electrons. Okay? Not quite, but almost. Next up, we have insulators. Now, insulators are typically materials that form, not always, but most of the time, they form negative ions. So we're talking about negative one, negative two, negative three, etc. In other words, insulators really want to hold on to their electrons, and that's important because they are sticky to electrons. And so what that means is that their valence electrons don't really move, okay? They can kind of slide back and forth a little bit, if I have a nucleus and I have the inner electrons and then my outer ones, they can kind of move if that's an electron from one point to another, but they can't really go from one atom to the next. They're, kind, they're very tightly bound. Okay, and what this means is that these materials don't allow the flow of electrons. So these are insulators, okay? Most insulators are plastics or wood or thing like things like that. Um, and if you think about it, well, what kind of atoms make for good insulators? Well, fluorine, okay? Uh, chlorine, you see where I'm going with this, bromine. Uh, also things like, believe it or not, oxygen and nitrogen. And all these together, when you kind of make compounds out of them, they turn into plastics. And you're probably hearing the bell in the background. That's okay. All right, and so most insulators are made out of plastics or out of wood. Okay, so now let's talk about how charge actually gets from one point to another. So this is what we would call methods of charging. Okay, so let's see. There's Visa, there's MasterCard, there's American Express. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. So methods of charging, the first one is friction. 
and charging by friction is basically exactly what you think. Friction is the relative motion of two objects or in this case two surfaces. Okay, So if I have two surfaces they're really not smooth like that. They're actually kind of jagged, especially on the molecular level. And so what happens is that perhaps I have an electron right here which is going to hop over to the other side or maybe I have an electron here which hops over. It's going to really depend on what my two materials are. And so this is based off of something that we call the triboelectric series. You don't really need to know that but it's based off of in chemistry the concept you call electronegativity or in other words how badly does an atom want an electron okay so at the bottom of the triboelectric series are things that want to gain electrons they really really want electrons badly and these are things like Teflon and polyester which are if you look at it types of plastics okay and then on the other end of the spectrum you have things that really really want to give up their electrons. Now we're not putting metals in this because metals are conductors. We're talking mainly about insulators. Okay so friction does not really work that well with metals because if you rub the two surfaces together well the electrons are just going to go right back to where they came from. Okay so friction doesn't work. Um, there's something else with metals that we'll talk about in a moment. So at the top you have things like fur, you have glass, and those become very positive. Okay? So if you want to think about the direction that electrons move, they typically move down on this chart. Okay, so that's the first method of charging. The second method is what we call conduction, and that's the most important one for metals because metals are conductors and that is basically just a flow of electrons. Okay. Now the third one is the trickiest. This is what we call induction which we sometimes call polarization. Okay and this is an indirect method of charging so there's no contact and all three of these you're going to see in a lab a little bit later on if you're taking chem fizz. Okay, so how does induction work? Well, pretend like I have here a conductor, so it's neutral to start with, and over here I have an insulator, maybe it's Teflon. So an insulator, I can stick a bunch of charges on it, remember they are sticky to charges, and what is this going to do to the conductor? Well the conductor is full of positive and negative charges. The positive charges are in the nucleus with the protons. The negative charges are the electrons. And remember up here we said that the inner electrons don't move but the outer ones can kind of go all over the place. So that's what's going to happen. The outer electrons are going to run away because likes repel and so the outer electrons are going to run away from all these negative charges on the insulator. And that's going to leave me with positive charges left behind. If you want to think about it this way, these guys have lost their outer electrons. And so what's left? The positive charges from the nucleus. So that's very important because the positive charges don't actually move why it's because they're in the nucleus. Okay, and they're staying put. All right, now imagine what would happen if I took my insulator and I took it away. If I took it away, what would happen to all the charges? Well, basically we would have, whoops, we would have this situation where the negatives combined again with the positives 
and I don't lose my conductor, it's still there, but it's neutral again, okay, because the insulator isn't affecting it. Okay, so how do I keep my conductor charged? Well, the solution is before I take away the insulator, so let's bring that back. Here's my insulator, it's negative, and that's, remember, going to force away my negatives and keep my positives in place. Before I remove the insulator here, let's take our conductor, maybe it's a chunk of metal, and we take a knife to it and we're going to cut it. So now what this gives me are two pieces, one of which has some positive charge and the other one has some negative. And the insulator is still there. Okay? Now, my next step is to take away the insulator. Okay? So now you're gone. And what happens? Well, my two parts are separated so the charge can no longer recombine. So one side will be negative and the other side will be positive. Okay? Now if I stuck them together, I would have conduction, right? Because it's a conductor and the charges would recombine. But if I keep these two halves separate, they each will have their own charge. And that is the basics behind induction. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to take a closer look at the force between these charges.